You're listening to The Social Workers on WCDB Albany. Welcome to The Social Workers Radio Talk Show. I'm your co-host, Alyssa Lotmore. And today we are joined by the Director and Assistant Director for the UAlbany Center for Leadership and Service. This past weekend, their office led a very successful UAlbany Big Event, which we will learn more about during this segment. So a little about our guest today. Dr. Martha Jo Aslan has proudly served the State University of New York for over 30 years while employed at SUNY Cobleskill, Schenectady County Community College, and now the University at Albany. In May 2017, Dr. Aslan became the director of the Center for Leadership and Service and is a visiting professor for the Educational Administration and Leadership Program at the State University of New York, the University at Albany. Her professional experience includes serving as acting president of Schenectady County Community College and almost 20 years as their vice president and dean of student affairs. We're also with Cheryl Simmons, who is a class of 2009 proud alumna with almost a decade of experience working at UAlbany, ranging from the Performing Arts Center, university development, which includes university events, the Alumni Association, and the University at Albany Foundation. Cheryl is now the Assistant Director at the Center for Leadership and Service, with a focus on community service and engagement. Welcome, Martha and Cheryl. Hi there. Hello. (laughs) So as I mentioned, the big event happened this past weekend. So can you tell us what is the UAlbany big event and how did it come about? Sure. Um, sure, I'll feel free to jump in. Uh, okay. We're sitting here together. So the big event is actually a day in which all UAlbany faculty, staff, and students come together and we do something good to make an enormous social impact in our communities. Originally, it was said that we were doing this in the Albany area and with uh, life as it is today, our new norm, we made the event go virtual. So this is our third year of doing the UAlbany Big Event and it was our first time going virtual. Very exciting. So I do, um, and oh. let me just add to that too. Community service is really one of the core priorities at the University of Albany. So it's one of the top in our, for where we really need to be going with our priorities um, in our strategic plan. And it's all about community engagement, giving back, being a part of something bigger than ourselves. And so to have the big event represent that is always amazing. So as we said this year, due to the coronavirus pandemic, the big event was held virtually. So how were students creative in doing community service when they could not physically go to organizations or meet in groups? I mean, it seems like something that you guys had to maybe help with or were the students come up with ideas? Oh, for sure. I would say that it was a group effort, really. Um, Before the coronavirus really, really hit our community, Martha and I began thinking about ways that we can still benefit local organizations while um, this is happening. So even before we were sort of ordered to be at home or quote unquote go virtual, we were thinking of ways that our students, faculty and staff that are around the world could still participate in our big event. A lot of it is less about the physical part of helping an organization, but really being there for the organization. So we have had help from the organizations themselves, uh, volunteers, and our department when figuring out how we can make a big event that's supposed to be a very physical day of service virtual. And there's amazing community leaders that really helped make this happen for us too. For example, the Red Bookshelf, Mm -hmm. Um, uh, they just, they thought outside of the box and they thought about ways that they could do. So to have people read stories uh, to youth and to be able to record that and upload it so that the books uh, now are virtual and we can read those out loud and be a part of something bigger again than ourselves. Um, Cleaning out our own closets and identifying books, identifying clothes. Um, Another, the United Way jumped up and started identifying other projects that we all could be a part of. And then um, the Mooncatcher Project is another one for me. Here's this Schenectady-based, very small organization that's doing a huge social good that actually changed their focus from making sanitary products for uh, individuals in Africa to making um, face masks in our time of need and actually showing people how they gave the pattern for how to make it. 
Um, so the community just had to start thinking outside of the box and Cheryl and I got to be a conduit for able to use our Engage U Albany platform to be able to promote and market these opportunities. So what's the impact uh, an event like this has on the Albany community? And with this being a virtual event this year, when students going back home to their own communities, what is this impact to all communities and, you know, regionally? Um, so we had impressive numbers. And let me just share some of the numbers that we have for you. Um, we identified at least 54 community needs that were priorities of how do we give back. And they're just not communities in Albany. It was our greater community. It could be for the state of New York. We had some international um, needs that were listed out there. On our UAlbany platform, we were able to reach um, 1,282 users. Now those are individuals that have email addresses for our albany.edu. Not counted in that number are those individuals that brought family members, alumni that aren't using our email system at UAlbany, uh, relatives, friends that were joining in, and just the viral nature of what was happening with our, our, our giving uh, service and community needs. And then we also had uh, 200 individuals that sat in on one of our four training sessions that we offered throughout the day, which was amazing. Those were virtual training sessions on everything about um, the Masary Community Service Fellows Program at UAlbany, UAlbany Votes Ambassadors Training, Fill It Forward, um, and also Women Igniting Change. And so Cheryl and I, when we were thinking about what to call this event back when it was first started three years ago, we were toying with ideas and we stuck with the big event. We do like that title. But one of our ideas was calling it Deep Purple. And I really felt that this virtual experience really made it a Deep Purple event. We brought our colors purple and gold into our communities. And it was much bigger than just the Albany capital region. And the other beautiful thing that we saw from watching social media, we had you Albany contacts, whether that be our alumni, people that used to work at the institution, also giving back and giving a shout out to the campus. So it was just a beautiful day of connecting with individuals really all over the world, which was just an amazing experience. And because I was following on Twitter a little bit and on Instagram, and I would see the hashtags coming up of, about the event. And it was, you know, alums and all different people and organizations. So that's when I was like, this is a really amazing thing that you guys are doing. Yes. Cheryl, so, do you want to talk a little bit about um, the Out of the Darkness Walk and our amazing community leader that stepped up? Oh, for sure. There's, um, I was just going to say that the, the impact that this type of event has even when it's in person and it's directly benefiting the local community organizations it inspires and encourages other people to take part so i know for me seeing the the, the posts on instagram and twitter and facebook um i had alumni friends that were connecting contacting me like how do i get involved and i had to change the link in my bio to go directly to our page because there was so much interest and that makes me so happy um, each year we feature we have a featured event for the big event. This year, our featured event was the Out of the Darkness Walk. It's a walk to, um, to bring awareness to suicide prevention. And um, that walk is a very physical thing. It's a physical visual representation of support in communities around the country. So not being able to do that in person was a little bit of a challenge, but we managed to do it virtually. We had a Zoom session with hundreds of people on it and we streamed live to Facebook and live to Instagram so that anyone, depending on where they hang out, would be involved in this walk kickoff. Um, and it was so impactful to see so many people coming together at one time for one thing, um, taking the time out of their day to really stop, appreciate and listen to words of encouragement. I thought that was really beautiful. Right. But, um, the walk began and we had individuals walking virtually. So you can walk around your backyard, you can walk around your neighborhood, you can walk around your park, <laughs> you can walk around your living room if you wanted to. We just asked that people share those pictures and those videos and of course donate to the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. And I believe as of this morning, we've raised $12,877. That's yes. amazing. That's yeah. really amazing. And we're still collecting money, uh, collections coming in through June, and that amount doesn't even include the checks or um, the other things that walkers and teams were bringing forward. 
I do have some numbers for that, um, which were really impressive. Um, we had 254 people sign up through the platform through the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention and 41 teams. But there was something really beautiful that happened at UAlbany. We had some teams of um, student clubs organizations that came together to really make an impact. So our top three highest contributors to raising that money were Middle Earth students, were our scientists against suicide, the club at UAlbany, and then UAlbany's ODK, which is the National Honor Society for Leadership. Big shout out to those groups because somehow they organized in this time of all of us being spread all over the place, um, they came together and brought in an impressive amount of money to help with this dynamic cause. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. And it just goes to show even when people aren't together, sometimes when we think about service and community, it's coming together. But this is a way that we can come together virtually and still make a huge impact in our communities and, you know, help each other. So this is a really great thing. And I'm glad you're sharing these numbers with us. Absolutely. And so the theme for the big event really was about well-being, mental health, taking care of yourselves as we take care of others. Um, and I really thought we got that message across loud and clear with every one of our projects that we were doing. Now, this event is just one of the many ways that, you know, the UAlbany Center for Leadership and Service helps to make a difference. And can you give us a little overview about the center and how it does make an impact on students, the UAlbany community, and the capital region? Sure, sure. I can do that. So, um, the Center for Leadership and Service is really the hub for leadership development skills and um, community engagement at the university. We strive to partner with every community organization and all departments, professors at the university to really create um, a culture around community engagement on our campus. But the center, the center, you're looking at the two professional staff members of our center, and we do a lot. <laughs> um, of course, with the help of our student staff and our graduate assistant, but we are, we kind of have our hands in everything. We have a minor that comes out of our office that is in leadership within the School of Education. We do um, leadership development certifications. We call it our lead leader leadership. So um, learn to lead be a leader and serve your community through leadership. We offer many, many different opportunities for community service, whether it's in a week long program, a two week long program abroad or here in our local community. And we house the Engage Your Albany platform, which is where everyone was going this weekend to participate in the big event and where you can go anytime to find community service opportunities here in the greater capital region and beyond, which is super fun. We also have um, the UAlbany Votes Initiative that comes out of our office, whose mission is to increase voter engagement, voter education, and voter registration for students on our campus. And that's just a few of the things that we do at the Center for Leadership and Service. And I'll give a shout out to, we have a leadership minor that we just started three years ago when the center opened um, in collaboration with the School of Education, which is an impressive, it's 18 credit hours, it's uh, interdisciplinary, and it touches not only on leadership theory, but we look at best practices. We talk about organizations that are thriving in today's society. So it's a really meaningful minor for individuals to add to any major. Um, the other beautiful piece that stemmed out of that is our global leadership experience. And so Cheryl and I have been able to uh, bring students to Puerto Rico to do a cleanup project over there. We were supposed to be in Costa Rica for spring break to do a service project. Um, uh, on sustainability with Mary Ellen Malia, by the way, um, which I understand you'll be talking to later on. Yes. Uh, that got canceled. But we also do leadership, global leadership experiences. We've been to um, Madrid. We've been to uh, Scotland, um, the Netherlands. So we take, we try to give short-term study abroad experiences to students to incorporate more of a um, cultural awareness, cultural intelligence into their leadership uh, portfolio. And then other things, um, ODK, uh, the National Honor Society I spoke of earlier, and Alpha Phi Omega, which is our co-ed service fraternity on campus, also fall under the Center for Leadership and Service. So we work with a really dynamic group of outstanding student um, leaders from the University of Albany. Well, it seems like your office is a very valuable component for students to be able to have service and also for the university. You know, this is 
when students come to campus, I think that connection to being able to do service and to work with the community and do more than just go to classes, it's such a valuable part of the educational experience. So I want to thank you for what all that your office is doing for the students and for the university. Thank you. We appreciate that. So what next? What can we expect to see from the Center for Leadership and Service? We're always looking to expand and how do we partner and how do we build and make things a little bit different. We're right now talking about an orientation program that would be um, a full day service that we do for new students that are coming in as a way of getting them engaged with service from the beginning. It's wonderful that we do the big event in April. It's um, fantastic. I really feel that we need to be instilling more about community service, community engagement with our uh, new students that are coming to the campus. So doing it at orientation uh, would be something big for us to be able to do. Um, we're looking to expand our service projects and how we're going out and helping our communities in time of need. So here we are, I talked about, we went to Puerto Rico and we were looking at doing some work with um, coast in Costa Rica. There's more things now that we're noticing that we could be doing at home. So helping our own communities thrive and doing better work, especially in this time of need and what we're going through as a nation. Um, I see a lot of ways that the Center for Leadership and Service can adapt. I want to give a shout out to Cheryl. I see her right now working with them. She's just amazing. So here's Cheryl, a mom with these two adorable twins um, who has juggled this weird life that we've had for these last three weeks with such grace and style. Um, since we are the only two professional staff, we do have a grad assistant who's fabulous and a shout out to Echo Cutter. Um, when we're in the office, there is always students in our office when, when we're there that sometimes during the course of the day, we only get to see each other first thing in the morning when we're coming in. And, so, and then we try to fill each other in as we're walking to our cars at night because it's just um, constant traffic for us. This virtual life has just been wonderful. I get to see more of Cheryl. I think we're collaborating in unique ways together. But she's a dynamo. And so a shout out to my, my colleague, because I, I, I wouldn't be surviving this whole thing without Cheryl. Uh, you're dynamic. We always talk about her kryptonite. And she has amazing kryptonite that she brings in her superpowers. So. Oh, Bertha. <laughs> <laughs> they can be blush. They can't see this. But thank you so much. Well, uh, both of you for are being a supportive human and boss. Because I don't know that many people out there have supportive bosses. But Martha's definitely one of them. Well, you two are a dynamic team together, and I want to thank you for all that you're doing. For those who are interested in finding out, you know, following, you said there's pictures posted. How can we find you on social media? Um, you can follow you Albany Leads on all the platforms, right? Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We have a LinkedIn page. We have our website um, at albany.edu, the Center for Leadership and Service. And yeah, I think we pretty much hang out on Instagram and Facebook if you want to chat, but we are available at any time. Our phone numbers are directed to us. We answer our emails yeah. <laughs> all the time. Yes. Um, and then if anyone is interested in finding community service opportunities, whether it's where they are or, um, or virtually, please, please go to Engage U Albany. You all you have to do is put it in the Google search box. It'll pop up. <laughs> There's a few different ways you can get to the platform, but it is a really great platform. You can actually decide what to do based on the time, the date, your interests, um, maybe specifically uh, the area of education, whatever the case is, there is an opportunity for you on Engage U Albany. Just get on there. And if you are listening to this and you're not a U Albany human, as in a student faculty or staff member, you can find the same opportunities through United Way's platform. So if you go to um, United Way of the Greater Capital Region, their platform will show you all of the same opportunities. Perfect. And Alyssa, can I do a shameless plug for a couple of projects where uh, deadlines are coming up? Absolutely. If any student is interested in doing a Masri Community Service Fellows Program for the summer of 2020, applications are posted on the Handshake. Um, applications are due April 30th, and we will be announcing uh, within early May uh, the recipients. There's five individuals who will be re awarded the Masri Fellows Program, and that, that comes with a stipend of $5,000 per student, which is great. ODK, the National Honor Society in Leadership, um, their application for um, becoming a member is April 15th. You can access that through odk.org um, for the circle chapter. It's University at Albany. 
And we're hoping to do a virtual induction on May 3rd, Sunday, May 3rd. And then my last plug is for, um, we ran into some students that were not able to complete their internships this year because of uh, this semester, because of all the new things that are happening in the world around us. So we have designed working with Mary Ellen Malia, um, a new course in the School of Education. It's a one credit that will kick off next week, but anyone that would like to register for that can email us, either myself, Cheryl, Mary Ellen Malia. The course is EEPL 450, and for graduate students, it's 550. And it's a course on using, it's um, leadership, uh, leadership using the UN sustainable goals. There's 17 sustainable goals, and we're looking at how the best leadership, exemplary leadership is using those goals to move forward in today's day and age. Thank you so much. And for our listeners, again, we were joined today by Martha Aslin and Cheryl Simmons, who are the director and assistant director for the UAlbany Center for Leadership and Service. And as Martha just mentioned, um, some upcoming projects with Mary Ellen, Ellen Malia, who is the director for the Office of Environmental Sustainability. She will be joining us in a few minutes to talk about her initiative that was launched at the UAlbany Big Event as well. So thank you, Martha and Cheryl, for coming on virtually today. And I really appreciate it. Congratulations on a successful UAlbany big event. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're listening to The Social Workers on WCDB Albany. And we are back and we are joined with a new guest, Mary Ellen Malia, who is the director of the Office of Environmental Sustainability at UAlbany. Welcome. Hi, it's great to be here. Thank you so much for, for being a guest today. So the Office of Environmental Sustainability works with the academic departments, student groups, and community organizations to coordinate and advance sustainability efforts at UAlbany. Can you just give us a brief overview of the initiatives and the programs that your office coordinates? Sure. Um, so my office oversees uh, initiatives involved with environmental stewardship and climate mitigation. So one of the things I do is I calculate the carbon footprint for the campus. Um, so a lot of the role I play is data gathering and putting them into um, calculators that will let us know what our impact is. Um, I also interface with a lot of campus and community partners. I work with a lot of student groups. I think about five or six student groups, uh, many academic departments, but also some of our community partners. We work uh, pretty closely with Capital Roots and the Radix Center and the um, Clean City Coalition. Um, we're creating a climate action and sustainability plan for the campus, we were planning on rolling out on Earth Day. Um, some of our plans for that have been changed a little bit, but um, our office will be in charge of overseeing that and the governance of that and coordinating the groups involved. One neat um, program we have is called the Green Workspace Challenge, where offices can get certified in their for their green practices. And we also have an awards program called the Terra Awards. Each semester we honor faculty, a staff, and a student who have gone above and beyond the call of duty in terms of furthering sustainability on campus. That's some great things that your office is doing. I'm bummed to miss the, um, the Earth Day celebration. I always take my daughter every year that you guys do, and it's such a fun event. But I'm looking forward to it next year. <laughs> but yeah, it, it will be back. So you guys just had the UAlbany big event. We just were speaking with Dr. Um, Martha Aslin and Cheryl Simmons about the event. And it's, again, it's an event that students are virtually did community service around the community. And you launched the Fill It Forward campaign, which is a refillable water bottle initiative. So can you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure. Um, so I was approached by the provost. Uh, one of the things she would like to do at UAlbany, and I'm in total um, agreement with her on this, is to try to reduce the use of single-use plastics and especially water bottles. So we um, partnered and we um, asked um, Grace McGrath, who is a, a young woman who works in my office, as well as the Office of the Center for Leadership and Service, and she was quite instrumental in the um, reducing the plastic straw distribution on campus. 
So we got together and we're thinking about a way we could um, reduce water bottle use. And so I, um, a couple of years ago, had gone to a sustainability conference where they had um, these tags, a sticker you can put on a water bottle you already have. And they also had water bottles there you could um, get as well. And what I liked about the tag is it had a barcode on it and you download an app and you could keep track of how many times you filled your water bottle and it would calculate the environmental impact of that. And what that group has actually done is subsequently partnered with four um, global water, um, clean water advocate groups. And so every time you fill your bottle, you're not only creating an environmental impact, but you're also donating a cup of clean water um, to somewhere in the world where access to water is not as um, readily available as we're used to it uh, in Albany. Um, and so um, it's a really great project. Um, and uh, just to give you a little idea, they've actually donated over 4 million cups of clean water as a result of this. And they work with um, some of the organizations they work with are um, Dig Deep, Water.org, Org, and Water First. So it's a really great um, way to not only uh, encourage sustainable practices, but to help others around the globe who are in need. So we, we're launching this. Um, with the provost and we had I was talking to Martha I talked to Martha quite frequently we collaborate on a lot of uh, projects and she's like this would be great to incorporate into the big event so we were hoping to give out the tags on the day of the big event but obviously it moved to a virtual format so what we decided to do is uh, do a webinar on it and we did um, and people could sign up and listen to the webinar and hear about the fill it forward uh, campaign as well as send us their address so we could send them a tag. Um, and so we're also going to be putting that on social media um, where people can send in their address or they can also even email my office go green at albany.edu. So people want to tag, they just have to send us our address and we'll mail them one. Very cool. And it sounds like you guys, your office makes such a big impact. So can you tell us what the impact is on the UAlbany campus, on the community? Because you have so many different initiatives with this Fill It Forward and some other things that you guys are doing. Yes. Well, as I mentioned in the beginning, I calculate the carbon footprint um, so that we've actually been able to reduce our carbon footprint by 14%. Since 2005 is when we started really measuring a lot of these and initiating a lot of activities, which is rather impressive considering we've also grown. We've built a lot of buildings over that time. So the carbon footprint will capture things like our electricity, our heat, our waste. So I think it's pretty impressive how we haven't increased those at all, even though we've gotten bigger and had more students. Um, we've also um, been conscious of our water use and have reduced that, and we're working to reduce that more um, by um, installing some submeters so we know where the water's being used. So that's sort of on our operational side things we've been doing, and people may have noticed around campus we have a lot more um, recycling and waste infrastructure, a lot more clear about what goes where. Um, but something I do is I work a lot with um, or uh, professional organizations around sustainability, both at the state and national level. And we've tried to take a leadership role in that. Um, for example, um, tomorrow night, we're hosting a statewide um, discussion on climate solutions. Um, and we're gonna have some of the state um, representatives there. Um, we have over a thousand people signed up for it. So we really enjoy that we can bring these discussions to the community. And we also give students a lot of leadership opportunities. Um, We've had them attend climate training um, sessions down at Bard College. They were a great partner offering that. And you even went to a Beyond Waste um, conference uh, at SUNY ESF this uh, past um, winter in February before travel was restricted. We got that in. And we just recently hosted a virtual um, sponsored uh, virtual conference put on by the National 
a wildlife uh, foundation um, eco careers. And we had over 120 students sign up for that. In fact, they said we had the most registrants of any campus who participated. So we try to do it operationally, but also academically and provide um, development opportunities for our students. So what are ways that students, faculty, and staff can become involved in with more sustainability on campus? Well, there's lots of ways. So um, That's good. That's good. Think, Many yeah, options for us. Um, you know, um, there's a lot of interest in this and that that's awesome. And everybody, you know, figures out what level of involvement they want to get. Um, something, something as simple as just following us on social media. So we have a Facebook page, U Albany Green Scene. We also have a pretty active Twitter and Instagram account. Um, and our handle there is U Albany Green Scene, but um, the E's on the scene are taken out. You know, it's a little truncated um, handle. Um, but we try to communicate a lot through those more dynamically. We do have a website, which is albany.edu backslash go green. That's a pretty static um, thing. We don't update that as much as our social media pages. Um, and, and we also have a couple listservs. So as I mentioned, our email is go green at albany.edu. We have a listserv geared towards students. And we have a listserv geared towards faculty staff. So the faculty staff one is more um, looks at academic related opportunities and events on campus. And the other list third is more in student engagement. So you can just stay in, informed as to what's going on and what are the projects happening. As I mentioned, we're getting ready to launch the implementation of our climate action plan. So we're going to have be looking for people, people interested in working on those teams and there'll be different teams around grounds or energy or student involvement or academics. So there's a lot of opportunities for um, people to get involved in creating new projects or around um, reducing our climate footprint. Um, another thing people can do um, is get involved in one of the student organizations. So my office is rather small. Um, so I, I would love to have more opportunities for students to work in the office, but it's not quite feasible. And I don't actually tend to do a lot of events myself, but all the offices and all the student organizations and all the campus organizations involved in this. So my office represents the Green Scene, but we really are a whole coalition of many people. So right now I work with about five different student groups. We have a group that's look, uh, interested more in animal welfare. We have a group that's um, looking, that goes, goes on hikes, you living outdoors. So if you want a, more of an outdoor kind of involvement, um, our U Albany Students for Sustainability group does more of the overarching, um, all sorts of activities from energy to recycling to food, but they focus on campus. But then we have other groups that focus more globally, like there's a group UNA USA. So if you're a student, I think getting involved in those student groups is a great way to get involved. Um, if you're a faculty or staff um, joining our listserv, or we also have a group called Sustainability Coordinators. So they get together uh, once a month during the academic year and we review what's going on with sustainability. They've created um, the Terror Awards, they created another program that I mentioned called the Green Workspace Challenge. So if you want to get involved by getting your office certified in the green practices you do, you can do that as well. Um, and we're thinking with the Climate Action Plan, we may create a new group called Ambassadors. So these would be people who maybe you don't have enough time to go to the meetings or serve on a subcommittee, but you're willing to share information, say when we do something like daylight hour in June. We, we encourage everybody to turn off their lights for an hour. But we getting the word out on campus, so you probably have heard, is a hard thing. <laughs> We're a big campus. There's so many things going on. So word of mouth is really sometimes the way people find out about those things. So we think this ambassador program will be helpful if we have many people signed up willing to share information about upcoming events or initiatives we're working on. Well, I'd like to be one. Can I volunteer already? <laughs> Oh, you're on my list. <laughs> so you're on my list for sure. And I definitely um, want to, uh, you know, get you, um, get you a uh, fill it forward tag. 
<laughs> would love one. So what can we expect uh, next from the U Albany Green scene as we're looking forward? Is there any, uh, you know, you've mentioned a few of the initiatives and things that are coming up, but is there anything else that you'd like to point out that we can look forward to? Yeah, actually, we're going to kick off um, on Wednesday. A, a can- the Fill It Forward is kind of part of an overarching Earth Day campaign that we're calling 50 for the next 50. So this April 22nd, April 22nd is always Earth Day. And this year it's the 50th anniversary of it. And we were hoping to have a big birthday party with birthday cake on campus. And we were actually going to serve beverages but have no cups. So people would have to bring their bottles like a BYOB, but bring your own refillable bottle. But we can do that. So we're going to make that a virtual event. So what we're going to be asking people to do is um, think of an environmentally friendly action, uh, snap a photo of themselves doing it, and put it on social media, media tagging 50 for the next 50 and New Albany Earth Day. And we're going to compile them. And we're hoping to get 50 different people posting by April 22nd. Ooh, I will definitely participate in that. And I may also get cake and bring my own bottle and just do the whole thing myself too. <laughs> well, part of the event too is on the 22nd, take a picture of yourself with the birthday cake or a cupcake in honor of birthday's birthday. Oh, that is great. Can't pass <laughs> up on the opportunity for cake. Oh yeah. Have your own cake. But yeah, so we're, we're excited about that because I think it's a way we can, and it'll get people out. They can, I mean, I know a lot of people have been enjoying the outdoors, rediscovering the outdoors lately. Um, it'll be a chance for people to get away from their screens and, and do something that um, is good for the environment but makes them feel good as well and share it with us visually so we can all uh, um, see all the different things people like to do. We will be providing out some um, idea, a uh, list of ideas. We have actually have 50 ideas of things you can do and they're a wide range, you know, from you know, helping to do some advocacy work and joining some campaigns, um, to, uh, saving species work, to saving water, to saving energy. There's so many ways you can you can do this. It's, I'm very excited about it. Well, I'm glad we can still do this and participate virtually too until we can come all back together. Um, I'm glad there's many ways that we can still do these types of things virtually. Yes. So I want to thank you for coming on today and talking about, you know, the Fill It Forward campaign that launched this weekend at the UAlbany Big Event and some other things that we can look forward to and ways that we can be involved to really help our environment. So thank you so much for, for being on. Uh, no problem. Thanks for having me on. And I'm looking forward to seeing your um, posts on social media. Oh, you know, I'll do that. <laughs> And again, today we were joined with Dr. Mary Ellen Malia, who is the Director of the Office of Environmental Sustainability at UAlbany. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're listening to The Social Workers on WCDB Albany.